Hey, it's Nana. Welcome back to Solo Trip Podcast. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film these weekly Solo Trip Podcast episodes. And we are talking about all things spirituality and metaphysics and the occult and life and love and so, so much more. But for this video, we are kind of delving into something that makes me feel very uncomfortable. And it's also something that I've debated coming on here and talking about for literally like two years now ever since I left the relationship that I was in that where I like experienced domestic abuse and domestic violence and financial abuse and emotional abuse and all the other kind of abuses that you can think of (laughs) so I like as you can probably imagine battled with how much I wanted to share online but then I feel like I've kind of reached a point now where, I don't know, I feel like it's such an important topic to talk about and help raise awareness. Like if I'm going to be so public with music and stuff and get to connect with people from literally so many different countries, like when you tell me the countries that you're from, it just blows my mind that we can literally connect from other sides of the world. So like if I'm doing that, and pursuing that then I feel like I almost have a duty to talk about things that matter and especially things that I've actually experienced myself I feel like it would be wrong of me not to talk about it and not to like try and help you know like share my experience so then hopefully that helps other people that are either dealing with it and in it themselves or have been in it or even prevent people from getting in it in the future because I realized how I even got in my kind of situation too and I don't know I think if I'd have watched other videos and people talking about this kind of thing then maybe I wouldn't have fallen into that kind of trap myself you know so we're going to get into all of that in this video but I just want to kind of put this disclaimer out there that like I'm just talking about my experience and I'm well aware that some people may have gone through way worse than I have like there's some horrific things that go on in this world honestly it's really disgusting and like at the same time the emotion and like the level of emotion that we feel may well be the same even if our experiences are different you know we all feel the same emotions and like the intensity that we feel them is kind of the same so like no experience can discredit or discount another you know like we all go through so many things and yeah I just kind of feel like I'm almost obligated or like it's a duty to sit here and talk about it you know but I really did battle for the last two years because I didn't want to get on here and start I didn't want to talk about it when I was still in it or not in the experience but in the emotion of it and like the the trauma of it I didn't want to sit here and talk too soon and then like trigger somebody else like to fall into it way worse and make them feel shit about it you know because oftentimes when you hear other people's stories it can affect you emotionally even though you may not have experienced it yourself so I only wanted to talk about it when I felt like I could actually help and not make things worse and also not make things worse for myself you know because oftentimes like we can speak without thinking or without thinking how it will affect somebody else you know so I don't know it just kind of took me two years to feel more comfortable in myself enough to sit here and talk about it because it is quite vulnerable and scary to talk about but yeah I kind of noticed especially now because of isolation and the fact that we're all having to be at home um it's been publicly said that like the statistics for domestic abuse have risen because obviously people are being forced to be at home in these toxic environments and I'm sure it's probably risen for all kinds of scenarios that go on at home including like children and things like that you know so I feel like now is probably the best time for me to get on here and talk about it because there's a lot 
like we're aware of a lot more people that are dealing with it. So I almost feel a bit like I don't know where to start with this because I don't know, I don't really talk about this to anyone and now all of a sudden I'm sitting here talking to myself with a camera and then putting it out to the world for everyone to see. But I definitely feel like the more that we're honest and open about the things that we go through, no matter how horrific it is, no matter how much blame you hold, like how much it was your fault, I do feel like the more we talk about these things, the more awareness that there is, the more that we can prevent these things from happening, both the victims and the perpetrator, because we can kind of get through to them as well by just sharing our experiences and, I don't know, just supporting each other, I guess. So for me, like 2017 was the worst year I've ever, ever experienced. But I mean, now I can look back on it and I'm grateful that I went through it. I'm grateful that it all happened because every situation that you go through does make you who you are. And I learned so much from being in it. But at the same time, it doesn't make it right. And it doesn't mean that it should happen because it absolutely shouldn't. And there's so many things, like a full list of things that shouldn't happen and that are not right. So with this type of experience, obviously, it's not just physical. And some people don't experience the physical abuse side of it. But... I mean, there's so many layers to this and I'm not like a psychologist or anything like that. So I'm not sitting here saying like, this is the reason and this is what you should do and everything like that. But I'm just sharing like how I have dealt with it in myself and the experience and then being able to literally pick myself back up, you know, and not choose people like that ever again and also be able to like be me you know, because when you're in those kind of situations, it's so, not only degrading is the wrong word, it's so like belittling, it literally crushes you, like it literally destroys you, you know, so when you go from something like that and then you leave it, there's a whole load of processes that need to happen, you know, so let's kind of go back to the beginning of like, um, when I entered this relationship if a relationship is what you can even call something like that but um like I was already in such a depressed low state of being and state of mind so that kind of draw me in to this person because you know that they are manipulative and they do I mean, they do have like strategies behind things, even when they're not consciously aware of it. Sometimes they might not actually be fully aware of the manipulation that they're doing, but that doesn't mean it's not there. That doesn't mean that they're not doing it, you know, like there's always an ulterior motive. So yeah, I was kind of like so depressed and so lost and really just didn't know what the fuck I was doing with my life and then I met somebody that was into music as well and really supported me with that and like wanted to help me even so to find somebody like that that was so supportive because obviously at the beginning everything seems amazing it, it like you don't always notice the red flags and sometimes the red flags are not that obvious you know it can be little things so you're not gonna pay attention to that so yeah, I was just very drawn in because it was like, oh, finally, somebody gets it. Like, somebody sees that I can do music and really wants to help me with it. And, like, they're passionate about it as well. We resonate. We're on the same wave, you know. Like, it was just that excitement and that whirlwind. And then it's only when you're around them more often and you become more serious with them and, like, you're more vulnerable with them because obviously when you're in relationships there is a vulnerability to it because like you're literally connecting with somebody you know especially with intimacy as well and especially for women <laughs> I have to say like especially for women in intimacy so it was just like an exciting time and everything seemed amazing at first and like we had so much in common and we got on really well and then slowly but surely little things would happen and I mean every experience is different and everyone is different and how you handle things is different how the 
person that's manipulated manipulative how they start to like let that out is different and it varies but from what I experienced was subtle things of like insults you know like moodiness where they would just ignore you or just kind of I don't know like you know when you can just feel the tension it was literally like walking on eggshells 24 7 not even gonna lie so it would start with like insults and just saying certain things like you did something wrong when you don't actually feel like you've done something wrong but then you just kind of accept it because you're just a bit like I, I don't know it kind of almost takes you a bit like what the fuck <laughs> sort of thing but then also you want to respect that maybe they're feeling a type of way and so you just kind of accept the blame even though you don't feel like you've done anything wrong so it will just start with little subtle things and then it progressively gets worse and I just want to like put this out there so that anyone that's experiencing any kind of form of this is aware of the signs because I think it's so important to notice and to pay attention to because oftentimes we get in these things and we're not looking for the signs the signs are subtle they're not full blown in your face so you may think that this is the most incredible person and then it's only a few months in that like the big things happen you know so I feel like I want to walk through the little signs and just talk about how it progressively builds because it's really important that we raise awareness with this and that we talk about it and that we pay attention but I will go into like the more empowering aspect of it and how you can pay attention and all of those kind of things like further into the video after we have gone through the hell parts of it you know so yeah it will just start with like little things like insulting and just kind of making you question yourself, making you doubt yourself, making you feel like you've done things wrong when you haven't or like you could do better, you know, it's like subtle little digs all the time and it may start off like with one little thing here and there and not that consistently and then it progressively builds to where they're literally telling you that you're nothing and you're no one and you're ugly and you're this and you're that and like fully just putting you down and normally when someone like insults you you can kind of brush it off but when you're either living with the person or you're around the person a lot and it also when you're vulnerable with them and you have built that like connection because they've been so lovely to you for the first period of time like you're invested in each other you know so like for them to switch from being so amazing and so lovely and then all of a sudden it's like some kind of belittling insult it just I don't know it makes you just accept it because you're just like what the fuck and then they might go back to being nice so it's like it literally I feel like it's like walking on a tightrope you don't know you don't know how to stay balanced like you don't know what to do it's like you're dodging a ball that's coming at you or something and you just one minute you're feeling so good and like you're so connected and so happy and then the next minute you're like feeling so shit and like where did this even come from kind of thing you know so I don't know it's really weird when I think about it but it just progressively builds and then it will get worse and the insults will get more and like more severe and more intense and nasty and for me one of the things that happened was because we were living together so one of the things that would happen was he would like throw things at me and he would chuck water over me all the time when I tell you like in my face like fully just launch water at me don't ask me why I have no fucking clue but I would just end up like drenched in water randomly for no reason or like he would be annoyed about something and then he would just launch water at me or something so that used to really like that's almost like humiliation that would really make me feel so shit because now I'm literally standing here wet like what the fuck <laughs> do you know what I mean like what the actual fuck so 
yeah it can just be like weird little things and even things that could be a joke you know like people play fight all the time and like they have banter and insult each other especially in the UK like our banter level is brutal <laughs> we will fully rip it out of each other and like we'll know that it's a joke you know so sometimes it can be things that you'd think with somebody else it would be funny and it wouldn't be that serious but with them like you know that they mean it you know that they're trying to hurt you you know that they're like even when you question whether they're trying to hurt you and you feel like maybe they're not like just something feels cold something feels wrong it feels off it feels it feels like why would why would you do that I thought we were cool like I thought we were in love with each other like we've just gone from something so incredible to now all of a sudden I'm like really unsure about what had just happened do you know what I mean so I feel like even when you you see the good in the person and you know that they can be good you also know how you feel you also know that it doesn't feel nice when they do that thing whatever that thing is you also know how horrific that feels inside of you you know and oftentimes we try to bury that and we try to push that away and make excuses for them and try and remember the amazing things just to take away from and like dismiss the negatives but you really can't dismiss it because I mean it keeps happening you know it's not just a one-time thing is something that they keep doing and they keep doing all of these little different things and it's constant and it makes you feel uncomfortable and that's not normal like that's not a normal thing and no matter how much we try to convince ourselves that it's okay and that we can accept it and that they're going through something so that excuses it like it's not right it's not right and it's not okay and it shouldn't happen and it doesn't matter how much you love them or how much they love you it is not okay it's never okay and it doesn't matter which gender you are or anything like that like it's not okay so yeah <laughs> so along with these like subtle things and these little lashing out type of actions there's obviously a lot of emotional abuse behind it and I know that some people may not experience the physical side of things a lot of people experience the emotional side of things and oh my god like that it has so many layers to it and so many ways that that can happen but a lot of it is about really getting into your mind and making you feel worthless you know like it's a power trip they want to feel like you need them, feel like you depend on them, feel like you can't live without them, you know, like the idea of ever being with somebody else does not even enter your mind. For me, I literally couldn't even picture living anywhere else. I couldn't picture going back to my parents' house. I couldn't picture like, it literally felt like he was my world, like it consumed me, you know. I couldn't picture making music and being public with it nothing like absolutely nothing you know he controlled the money he controlled everything in my life including my fucking thoughts because they literally get so into your mind and make you feel like absolute shit and then on top of that they then make you feel like you're crazy for feeling sad about it you know like they're kind of will manipulate the situation to make you feel like you're abusing them or you're manipulating them or you're acting a certain type of way towards them when they're the ones doing it you know and then accusing you of stuff that you didn't actually do do you know what I mean and then you'll make excuses for them and you'll be apologizing to them for things that they've done kind of thing or they will apologize and like you'll you'll feel like it's sincere and you'll feel like okay he really regrets this like he wishes that he hadn't just lashed out in that way and like he is sorry and then the next day 10 minutes later a week later however long it it may be it'll happen again you know and it might not be the same thing it might be something else that they do but like it always happens again no matter how long a gap it is it always happens again and 
And I mean, it's going to happen again because that's where they're at mentally, you know. So <laughs> I feel like there is no excuse in it. There's no excuse for it. It's just something that they keep choosing to do. And let's be real, like, this is a choice that they're making. Because oftentimes we excuse it and we act like, oh, we convince ourselves that they didn't mean to do it. And they'll tell you that they didn't mean to do it. They'll tell you that they're sorry. They'll tell you that, like, they'll never do it again and all of this kind of stuff. And you'll convince yourself that it's true and you believe it and they really are sorry. And, like, it's your duty to forgive them because that's what a loving partner does, you know? And that's what they tell you that you need to be. And you need to be more of a woman and more of, like, a loving person towards them and nurture them and look after them you know like he would always convince me that I wasn't doing enough and I didn't look after the house enough and I needed to do more you know so like they fully get so inside your head and make you question yourself and question what you're doing I feel like you could be doing more and you're not doing enough and all of these kind of things and then it just gradually gets worse because now you feel worthless and it's like they're deliberately planting that seed in you of unworthiness and all of these kind of insults and then when it progresses to more severe things of like blaming you for certain situations and things now you accept it because you already feel worthless because they've already been insulting you for ages so now now you're like oh maybe it is my fault then and then when they apologise for certain things, you now feel like you need to accept that apology because you feel like there's been a million things that you've done wrong and that you're not good enough and all of this kind of stuff. So it's just like a vicious cycle that really does get worse and worse and worse. And I don't know, I think it's so... Like, it almost could save lives, you know, to notice these signs from the beginning or whenever you can like as soon as you can to really acknowledge that this is not okay and it's something that shouldn't be happening and not something that you have to tolerate or live with or put up with no matter how much you feel like you need this person and can't ever leave and no matter how much of a cage it feels like you're in this is not okay and you can leave and you can change your life and like when I was in it I really didn't see a way out like I really didn't and things progressed and it got more and more violent to the point where like he would like pin me down by the throat and things and like there was just so many situations that went on, so I'm not going to go into, like, the whole scenario of different <laughs> episodes or whatever kind of word you want to call it. But, um, like, because it would obviously progress and progress, I know for a fact in myself that if I didn't leave when I did, if I'd have stayed, because I was with him for, like, a year, if I stayed the thought of what would happen in five years time, 10 years time, even another year, you know, because it starts off with little things and it gets worse and worse and worse. And like, we're already at the stage of like choking and launching things and doing all of these kind of things. Can you imagine? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't even want to imagine where it would have led to. And I know that there are so many people that have experienced it even worse and that have been in it for years and years and stuff so like it's just so important that at any point no matter how long you've been in it it is so important like oh I just literally like if I picture my younger self from two years ago I just want to shake her and be like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> like why are you tolerating this do you know what I mean why why would you allow someone to treat you like this and that's not to blame because it's not your fault they really do get inside of your head like it's not your fault that they're acting this way that they're treating you this way that they're behaving this way that is not your fault you didn't do anything wrong and it doesn't even matter 
whether you have done something wrong like nobody deserves it nobody deserves to be treated like that you know you could have done the worst fucking thing possible and you still don't deserve to be treated that way and I guarantee you haven't done the worst thing possible I guarantee it's probably something ridiculous like you cook their food wrong do you know what I mean and then all of a sudden you get all of these insults or you get physically hurt because of that do you know what I mean so it doesn't matter what the reason is there's no excuse there's nothing like not a single fucking thing warrants any kind of behavior like that any kind of physical behavior or any kind of emotional or financial behavior so yeah <laughs> I just want to say that and I feel like I'm kind of saying that to my inner self as well that needs to hear that it was not her fault because even now it's something that I struggle with like I don't like to be perceived as a victim or feel like because I understand both sides and I understand the roles that we both came to play but I also have to remind myself that like that kind of behavior is not your fault you know like it doesn't matter whether you could have made better decisions you still didn't deserve that you know so yeah I just think that's really important to acknowledge to be honest and I also want to touch on financial abuse because I feel like this is one of the things that people don't talk about and probably aren't aware of as much you know like we think about emotional we think about physical but I don't really see anywhere people talking about financial and this is something also that the laws are kind of not very good with in a way to help the victim not have to deal with the debts or the burden of whatever kind of financial mess they leave you in because in a lot of cases especially with marriage and things like that um like if they control the money and they control the bank account and they give you limited access or they don't give you any fucking access like they can run up debts in your name and do all kinds of things which like happened to me we signed certain agreements and things together and like we rented a flat together so like he can just kind of or she if whatever you're going through like they can just Oh, there's just so many ways that they can take advantage you know like I would lend him money and he would never give it back I literally went all the way into my overdraft by thousands and he didn't pay any of it back so like there's just so many ways that you can literally be taken advantage of to be honest because especially when they're emotionally manipulating you and making you feel unworthy and all of these things and then make you feel like you're not caring for them enough and doing enough you then want to help them in any way that you can so if they're dealing with some kind of financial situation which is the case for me you want to help because you care about them like you're in love with them or at least you feel like you're in love with them and you really want to support them and be there for them and help them through their situation so I would lend money and then he wouldn't pay any of it back and stuff like that and now that puts you in debt you know I think that's something that's really key to pay attention to and look out for is the person's financial situation and whether they keep like asking you for help and making you feel like it's yours like he would always make me feel like his debts were my debts when we're not married we hadn't been together that long like why am I responsible for your lack of financial maturity do you know what I mean but because you're then broken down and you're emotionally invested and like you feel like everything is your fault and you feel like you're not being a good enough person or partner if you don't help and don't care like you feel like you have to support so then I would lend like it was a lending it was an agreement of lending but of course he was not going to pay any of it back and then not only that but then he controlled all of the money that we did have so then I couldn't afford to do anything you know I couldn't buy anything at all so yeah it's a pretty shit situation to be in to be honest but I definitely think that that is something to pay attention to as well is all of these just subtle things like they're really subtle but I think if I could give my younger self 
from two years ago, which is not that fucking young, to be honest. Like, it's not even limited to age, because at any age you can get into these kind of situations. But if I was to give her advice, it would be to really pay attention. Like, oh my god, you need to pay attention to everything about the person. Like, what's their situation? you know, what's their relationship with their parents, what's their relationship with their friends, how do they treat people, I remember the way he used to speak to people on the phone, like if he would call the gas company or something, he would be so fucking rude, like so rude, and I would just sit there like, oh my god, you know, because it's like finally he's not having a go at me for it, or like, speaking to me like it but he was speaking to somebody else and I kind of felt sorry for them on the phone because they literally didn't do anything wrong either and he's just like laying into them for no reason so the signs are really there but it's just a case of knowing where to look and how to pay attention to them so I really think it's like it's looking at their whole life what's their situation what's their relationship like with all of the people around them their family do they get on with their parents is there some kind of tension there because that's a sign in itself if there's an issue with the people that birth them and that doesn't mean that it's their fault because i mean there's a lot of people that have trauma when it comes to their parents that doesn't mean that whatever happened there was their fault you know it could have been their parents' fault completely, 100%. But how do they deal with that? How do they process it? Are they aware of that trauma's existence, you know? Because oftentimes people carry trauma and then they then inflict that onto other people. So I think it's really important to pay attention to all of those things to do with their lives and the way that they treat people, the way that they deal with their emotions. When they're annoyed, what do they do? And you can figure this out at the beginning, like you really can. When they're annoyed, how do they behave, you know? And even when things progress and you get further and further into it, if their behaviour starts to change, you need to be aware of that. Pay attention to that. Because it's just so important. Really, it's all about awareness. You know? And I also think that if we... I mean, if we were taught in school how to be ourselves how to treat people with respect, how to process our fucking emotions, how to, oh my god, if we were just taught how to be ourselves, like everything to do with the self, to do with our emotional body, to do with our mind and our thoughts, if we were taught all of this by our parents and also in the schools, I don't think we would get in these kind of situations and I also think that a lot of children when they grew up into adults they wouldn't be so abusive themselves as well you know because we would all know and have the tools of how to deal with our anger how to deal with our stress and I think that would just change so many people's lives to be honest and then the lives of future generations because they wouldn't be raised by traumatized parents that haven't been taught how to process their emotions from when they were children do you know what I mean so it's just like a generational thing to be honest and obviously everyone has their own reasons for why they're rude and manipulative to people why they're narcissistic why they're abusive and then there's also many reasons why other people then allow themselves to be in relationships with people that have those traits and characteristics you know like it's so layered so I just think it comes down to ourselves and our relationship with ourselves and really taking the time to get to know yourself and get to know the things that you want because when you're in your power when you know who you are when you know what you want when you know what you like and what you don't like you won't settle for that kind of behavior because not even the um not even the like being in the depths of it and like the abuse and the physical violence and things like that but from the beginning you'll notice they make you feel uncomfortable and instead of brushing it off or excusing it you'll be like hang on a second no fucking way like I'm not tolerating that and you'll leave because you're so secure in yourself and in your power that they just like do you know what I mean you just wouldn't even tolerate it and this is not bashing anyone that tolerates it because obviously I did I was in it myself but it's just having come out of it I now understand why I was allowing it and it's because I 
honestly had low self-esteem for as long as I can remember like as a young child I was so shy so insecure just do you know what I mean and there's so many layers and so many ways that we can build up our lives can build up and then we end up in these kind of situations but I definitely think that if we were secure in ourselves and loved ourselves we would not settle for less we certainly would not settle for somebody that would put us down all the time and make us feel like shit you know and oftentimes they're doing that because they want to have that power over you they know that you are the shit they know that you're fucking incredible and amazing and they want to make you feel like shit you know so I'm just trying to tell you if you're dealing with this situation that person knows that you are incredible they know like they can see how amazing you are and they know that if they put you down and make you feel like shit then you won't leave they know how much better you are than them they know that they don't deserve you so they're gonna literally drag you down to their shitty level to make themselves feel better do you know what I mean to make themselves feel like they're not gonna lose you and they can cling to you and literally suck the damn life out of you because it is essentially an energy vampire like that's what they're doing they need to feed off of you, to be honest. And that is not love. Love does not feed off of you to the point where you literally feel like you're dying. Do you know what I mean? Like, there was a point when I didn't even want to live anymore because I was just like, what is this? Like, what is life? How, how can life just be this? Do you know what I mean? So like how can someone make you feel like that, make you question your whole life, make you question yourself to that level and then call that love? That's just, that's not love. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Love doesn't do those things. So, and I think it's so important to realise that and be aware of that. And I just want to put this message out there to say like, that it's not okay, it is not love, you deserve more and you can have more in yourself, not in another person but in yourself, you can give yourself that love, you can give yourself the care, like if this was your child what would you say, if this was happening to a child what would you say, would you think that that's okay and they should just excuse it, no, if they were putting hands on a child, on your child, on any child, if you witness that in the street, if you witness somebody put their hands on someone or, to, or insult them, how would you feel? Like, what would you say? Do you know what I mean? Would you think that's okay? We tend to allow a lot worse things to happen to us rather than somebody else. Like, if we witnessed it in somebody else, we would fully see that that is not right. But when it comes to yourself, you tend to excuse it and make make things seem like it's not as bad as what it is, you know? Especially because they do isolate you from your family and your friends. Like, um, he would kind of make me feel like my family weren't good enough or, like, kind of insult them but also make me feel like I'm what's the word I don't even know the word like make me feel like I'm stupid for ever valuing my family do you know what I mean so like if I if I felt like my family were amazing or something then I'm so unworthy and so stupid and so blind and so all of these things to ever feel like they are cool and they are good and they are nice do you know what I mean it was like a constant humiliating kind of belittling like horrible feeling so yeah it really is like a dark cloud over you to be honest like a heavy weight and a dark cloud and a lot of manipulation a lot of lying a lot of making you tolerate things that you never would tolerate like in my previous relationships I was so strong I was so like if somebody did something that hurt me like I would tell them and we would talk about it and like do you know what I mean it went from that to like accepting the most ridiculous things that if I told you half of it you would be like what the actual fuck <laughs> like you allowed that like you accepted them going out and doing those kind of things like what the fuck do you know what I mean so 
it literally can happen to anyone it doesn't matter how strong you are how like anything how old you are none of that stuff we all we can all fall into dark places within our lives because this life is such a roller coaster we feel up and down all of the time and especially in today's world where it's so superficial and so based upon looks and based upon surface level things that don't matter to the point where people are literally surgically changing themselves you know in order to feel good and feel valued and feel worthy it's so easy to feel like to fall into dark places and feel like you're not good enough because you don't meet all of these expectations and all of these standards of beauty and success and all of those kind of things so I don't know I just think the trap is just so big <laughs> and so many of us can fall down it and there's no shame in it like you know what I mean there's no shame in it it's not your fault it's their fault it's something that they did and in order to heal from it it's a case of forgiving yourself forgiving yourself to, for letting yourself go there letting yourself tolerate it letting yourself be in that situation you know and that is obviously a daily process and not something that's very easy and I would definitely recommend like speaking to someone or journaling and speaking to yourself or anything that works for you but just being able to face those thoughts and those emotions and acknowledge them and validate them and literally just visualize your inner child and give her a hug you know because she is or he is a victim of something that happened to you that wasn't something that you wanted it was something that somebody else did something that you couldn't control because we can't control other people so it's not your fault and you don't need to feel ashamed about it but also your shame or your guilt or your fear or any other emotion is completely valid because for you to feel it means it's valid do you know what I mean you can't dismiss those emotions like you have to go into them and see them and acknowledge them and respect them and give them a hug because they are so valid and so worthy of existing and so like you know we create more shame when we start to dismiss those emotions as, as if we shouldn't feel it and I know that when you're in it it can feel so isolating and so almost like tunnel vision like you're literally in a box and you don't know you couldn't even possibly imagine or fathom any way out of it but there really really is a way out like there really is no matter how deep into it you are no matter how bad it is no matter how long you've been in it there is always always a way out there is always better there is always yourself there is always a way out and there's always someone to speak to so I am gonna list all of the numbers that you can call and contact and my dms are always open my phone number is in the description box like you can reach out to me at any time and there's also like the helplines and all of those kind of things if you want it to be anonymous and just go easy on yourself because this is such a big thing it's such a process and like some people are married with children and they're stuck in this you know so it's a huge thing and it's okay to be scared like it's okay to be scared it's okay to be uncertain it's okay to feel like you need them it really is okay to accept that that's how you feel but that you don't have to tolerate it, you don't have to stay in it, you don't have to live with it, there is a way out. And yeah, only you can get yourself out of it though. That is the other thing I realised. And for me, I spent um, a lot of my days, I would be looking on like Twitter a lot and reading, like I followed so many spiritual people and I would read it every single day because I would wake up in the mornings and I wouldn't even want to get up. Like I would try and just stay asleep or pretend to be asleep for as long as possible because I didn't know what his mood would be and I just didn't want to even get out of bed and face that, you know, no matter which way it could go. So I would go on like Twitter and read all of these people just talking about different things like they were talking about emotions they were talking about self-worth they were talking about self-love they were talking about 
incarnation and like soul agreements and soul contracts and our purpose for life and just all of these different things because I followed so many different people so they were talking about all of these different parts of life and it really did spark my full-blown awakening into like myself into who I am into my purpose why I would choose to incarnate and I think having that there that tool there to be able to constantly read it is literally like reprogramming your mind because I'm in a situation where he's trying to program my mind for me with all of these negative things all of these insults and so it wasn't even a conscious decision to like read these things but I realise now that I literally was trying to escape that situation and trying to program myself with other things so it was a really powerful tool that I had was to read these things on a daily basis and I would screenshot some of them and go back and read them and like I was literally because programming your mind is through habit and repetition like it's through seeing something or speaking something or reading something repetitiously that's how you program it so I was reading these constantly and it was just sparking so many questions so many thoughts that went against everything that he was saying you know and I think to be honest that is the thing that literally helped me get out like if I wasn't doing that I would have completely got lost and stayed in it you know but because I was reading those every day and watching different YouTube videos and like tarot readings and stuff like that it really honestly helped me perceive things differently see things from a different perspective and realize that what he was doing was not okay you know so that is another reason why I wanted to even make this video because by me watching videos about it and stuff really helped me and I feel like it's just like I said earlier it feels like I'm almost like it's a duty to sit here and talk about this because hopefully this will help somebody that's either in it or has been in it or whatever and yeah I just want you to know that it's not okay and there are tools that we can use and it's a, it's literally like a case of building your self-esteem back up because they strip it down to nothingness you know so that's what I was doing when I was reading these things was rebuilding my sense of self but of course it's not easy and it took me so many times to leave like it's not a straightforward thing you know it's a gradual process and even if you haven't been in this type of situation if you've um, done any type of shadow work or any type of like trying to better yourself and work on yourself you know that that is such a process so to be trying to do that process whilst in such a toxic horrible environment is really hard and it's really difficult and like it's difficult with even being in an amazing environment you know so being in a toxic one it's like a million times worse but at the same time it's something that's so necessary and so helpful in raising you up lifting you up and then once you begin to see your worth and realize that you are worth so much more than what they are doing even by being on your like being on your own even by being by yourself you are worth so much more and day by day when you start to instill that into yourself and program that into yourself and keep watching these videos keep reading things on twitter or on, in blogs keep reading all of those things and reminding yourself of your worth eventually even if it takes you so many times to leave eventually you will succeed and you will do it and you will change your life and you will get out of it like I promise you but you have to want to leave you have to want it in yourself you have to you have to want it more than you want them to be honest like you have to value yourself more than their behavior you know it's about putting yourself first it's about realizing that you are worth more than that you know and because they convince you that this relationship is everything and that you can't live without it but really like the process is then realizing that actually you are okay actually you can live without them you can survive without them you can be you being you is good enough you know and it's like really conditioning and programming yourself to remember who the fuck you are <laughs> you know because you were you before you even met them you weren't born with them you know 
they were not there when you were born. So, and even if they were, <laughs> even if it was that kind of situation where like you've known them your whole life that like it's still you that came through the womb by yourself like they didn't literally come out at the same time as you do you know what I mean so it's just I don't know it's just really important to realize who you are and to keep day by day just trying to remind yourself with whatever tools it is that you need but definitely things online are so helpful just constantly reminding yourself of your worth and who you are and allowing yourself to go through that process because I read somewhere before um on average it takes people seven times seven times of leaving and going back before you stick with it that's like some kind of statistic of the average, you know. And for me, I think it must have taken me well over 10 times. Like, I left so many times. I literally packed all my stuff and moved completely out of the flat, moved back in with my mum, and then still packed up all my furniture and stuff again and moved back in so many times. Like, it's such a mind game, honestly. So, it is a process, and you're not gonna just miraculously have a full-blown self-esteem and feel incredible all of a sudden you know like it's a daily process so you have to go easy on yourself and start to really get to know yourself and value yourself and find your sense of self-worth because you are worth so much more than this and I will keep on saying it like you are worth so much more than this so yeah I really hope that this video was helpful and like I said before my dms are always always open on any social media platform and you can also text me or whatsapp me my number is in the description below as well so please just reach out to somebody speak to somebody it doesn't matter who it is just and even if you're not planning on leaving just speaking to somebody and telling them how you're feeling telling them certain things that you're dealing with it really will help you know and if you know somebody that's going through this and you want to support them but you don't know how telling them to leave is not going to help like and that's just from my opinion and my perspective and my experience it doesn't help like insulting or being angry with or any kind of like negative thing towards the person that is doing this horrible behavior is not going to help and I know that that's really difficult for people to understand because when you're on the outside and you witness this dynamic you're obviously going to be angry at the person that's being abusive like that's the natural kind of reaction but if you then tell the victim that like if you it just makes them feel worse because they're already feeling unworthy they're already feeling shit they already feel like this person is their life literally their life so then if you come in and tell them that that person is evil they're gonna defend them they're gonna excuse the behavior they're gonna lie they're gonna make excuses they're gonna act like it's not as bad as what it is and stuff because they're having to tell themselves that on a daily basis you know they're literally feeling like that internally already so I think the best thing you can do is just be there just be somebody that's gonna listen to them and not judge and not give your opinion, not try and force them to do anything, not try to wake them up out of this like depressed thing that they're in, but just be there and just no matter how bad it gets, just literally be there because if they know that you're there, if they know that they can turn to you, they won't feel so alone, they won't feel like they need this person as much, you know? So for me, knowing that I had my mum, even though I didn't want to go and see her because I knew that she would be like, you need to leave, like, what are you doing? So I didn't want to go home very often at all. But I knew that she would be there no matter what, you know? So when it came time where I was like, I really need to leave this situation, I knew that I could turn to her and she wouldn't, even though she would feel a type of way, I knew that she would help, you know? So if you want to help somebody it's important to just let them know that no matter what, you were there. And you're not going to judge, you're not trying to force them to do anything that they're not ready to do, because they have to be ready in themselves. You're not trying to force anything, you're just there. And when it's time, they will eventually, 
hopefully realize that they deserve more and then they will leave you know but they obviously have to leave themselves and I know that's probably really hard to witness and wait for but and obviously I can't talk about every situation because there's going to be situations where you don't feel like the person's ever going to leave but that's just something that I felt like I needed and experienced for myself so hopefully that will help somebody or any of you that's dealing with this kind of dynamic too but yeah so I'm also going to leave all of the numbers at the end of this video and they'll also be in the description box below as well as my number and my dms and everything and I really hope that this helped you and yeah I just feel like it was so necessary to talk about and it's kind of lifted a whole weight off of me to be honest because I don't really talk about it at all except to myself and I always say that but like I do talk to myself and that is healing for me and therapeutic for me so yeah but I really hope that you're all doing well and like I don't know what else to say to be honest because it's such a horrific situation I don't feel like there's anything I can even say to somebody that's like in the middle of it but just that it's gonna be okay and you are worth more and you really need to see that and know that so yeah I hope this video was helpful and thank you so much for listening and watching I really really appreciate you and yeah, I think it's just important that we raise awareness and that we support each other and we help each other and we are there for each other and we just be fucking kind. Like it literally costs nothing to just be kind, you know? I don't know why people always feel like they have to hurt others and manipulate others and do all of this shit when if they just would deal with their own issues and step into their own power, because when you're behaving like that, you're not in a your power either when you're being abusive to people you're not in your power you're being an asshole so if we would all just do the inner work life would be so much nicer so much kinder and then we would all thrive in our relationships there would be less horrific experiences so yeah thank you so much for listening and watching and i will see you in the next video bye